Welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgeway, uh, author of On This Day in Tudor History, which uh, inspired uh, the idea of doing uh, these daily Tudor History videos uh, for you. On this day in Tudor history, Tuesday the 26th of August 1533, so that takes us back to the reign of King Henry VIII um, at Greenwich Palace, Queen Anne Boleyn, second wife and Queen Consort of King Henry VIII, prepared for the birth of her child by taking her chamber. That's what it was called. And this was uh, when a queen or, or a woman uh, entered a female only environment for the final few weeks of her pregnancy. It was usual at this time for a woman to take to her chamber uh, four to six weeks before the due date of her baby. But if you're good at, uh, at maths, uh, then you'll know that 26th of August was actually less than two weeks before Anne's baby, the future Queen Elizabeth I, was born. She was born on the 7th of September, 1533. Now, chronicler Edward Hall recalls that in the summer of 1533, the king kept his progress about London, so near London, because of the Queen. And we know from contemporary records that carpenters carried out work on Greenwich Palace to prepare the Queen's chambers for her confinement. A historian, Professor Eric Ives, notes in his book on Anne Boleyn that details of the arrangements were handed on from one royal confinement to the next. And we know that William Mountjoy, who um, was Catherine of Aragon's Lord Chamberlain, wrote to Thomas Cromwell on the 24th of July saying, I send you certain remembrances of things to be provided against the Queen's taking her chamber, of which I had experience when I occupied the room. So advice and lists and things were being uh, sought for Anne uh, from you know, Catherine of Aragon's time when Catherine had taken her chamber. On the 19th of August 15, 15, 1533, George Taylor, who was Anne Boleyn's receiver general, wrote to Lady Lyle in Calais of the arrangements for the Queen's confinement. He wrote, the King and Queen are in good health and merry. On Thursday next, they will come by water from Windsor to Westminster and on Tuesday following to Greenwich, where the Queen intends to take her chamber. So everything was sorted uh, for this date. And on the 26th of August, 1533, the Queen attended a special mass at the Chapel Royal in Greenwich Palace and then processed with her ladies to the Queen's great chamber. Before retiring to her special chamber, Anne and her ladies enjoyed a refreshment of wine and spices. And then Anne's Lord Chamberlain prayed that God would give the Queen a safe delivery. The Queen and her ladies then entered her chamber to await the birth of Anne's child. Now, as I said, this wasn't uh, the normal four to six weeks uh, before the birth of Elizabeth. So we don't know, uh, we don't know the, the, quite the reason why Anne was uh, late uh, going to her chamber. Perhaps preparations, uh, you know, hadn't been made or perhaps Elizabeth was earlier than predicted. We don't entirely know that she went into her chamber on this day in 1533. The 15th century royal book and the ordinances added to it by Lady Margaret Beaufort, um, mother of King Henry VII, stipulated what a birthing chamber uh, should be like and what it should have in it. Um, things like it should be carpeted, its walls, ceilings and windows should be covered with blue arras um, and that there were to be beautiful tapestries this, at this arras that was over the uh, walls and windows and that was to have calming and romantic images because it was thought that if, if a woman, if a pregnant woman uh, 
had a fright, saw a bad image that, uh, you know, the health of the baby could be affected, that it would cause um, some kind of deformity or something bad would happen. One window would be slightly uncovered to let in light and also fresh air when needed. Uh, should be furnished with a bed for the queen and a pallet at the foot of it. The queen would give birth on the pallet and it was set at uh, a height appropriate for the midwife. It was set close to the fire so that it was away from cold drafts as well. There should be soft furnishings of crimson satin embroidered with gold crowns and the queen's arms. There should be an altar. Uh, there should be tapestry, a tapestry covered cupboard to house the birthing equipment and the swaddling bands that would be needed following the birth. There should be a font in case uh, the baby uh, needed to be baptised straight away. If, you know, the baby was born sickly and it was thought that it was going to, you know, that it wasn't going to live. Of course, it was important to baptise it straight away. So there should be a font. There should be a display of gold and silver plate items from the jewel house. It was important for the queen and her baby to be uh, surrounded by symbols of her wealth and her status as queen. So that's what that was all about. And these birth rooms, apart from that one window that could be opened uh, to get fresh air, they were fastened up against fresh air as it was thought that this would be harmful. Uh, it was very dark, obviously, with these sort of tapestries covering everything. And so candles would have been lit in the darkened room and special objects would be brought in uh, to speed delivery. Um, women might have um, objects like amulets, uh, relics of saints uh, and also herbs and that to help with the birth. And it was thought that this womb-like chamber would protect the baby from evil spirits as it came into the world. And the woman, when she went into labour, was advised to remove all types of knots, fastenings, laces, buckles and rings so that she wouldn't be restricted in any way. But it was also a kind of symbolic loosening of uh, things, a symbolic gesture. It was... Um, seen that the removal of these tight things uh, would promote an easier birth. Now, although we talk about a woman going into confinement, taking, uh, taking her chamber is not really about a woman going into confinement. She wasn't actually alone. Men may have been banned from the chamber, but close female friends and relatives would join the women there. And of course, a queen consort would have a certain number of her ladies with her to keep her company. And it was a social occasion. Um, you know, there would be lots of chatting, lots of perhaps enjoying reading poetry to each other, playing cards. And when the labour began, the ladies, of course, would spring into action and help the midwife and make the cordial, which was a spiced wine or ale that was given to the woman during labour to give her strength to go through what she was uh, having to go through. The birthing chamber, to me, sounds as if it would have been rather stifling uh, in August. I mean, August uh, can be a hot month in the UK and I just I can't quite imagine what it must have been like for Anne to have been in that room. And thankfully, uh, she wasn't actually going to be in it for that long because of the fact that she went in so late. Um, but, you know, that was to be her home for that time until she was churched 30 days after the birth. So fortunately for Anne, her baby came sooner than expected and she gave birth to a healthy baby girl, the future Elizabeth I, on the 7th of September 1533. Of course, Elizabeth may have been a bit of a disappointment, a blow, an initial disappointment in that all the predictions from royal astrologers and, and everyone physicians and that had been that Anne was carrying a boy that longed for a uh, prince and uh, must have been quite a shock when, uh, when she was uh, obviously a girl. But that disappointment didn't uh, last 
for very long. And of course, uh, you know, we know that Elizabeth would become queen and uh, rule for, uh, what was it, 44 years? So um, a great uh, monarch. She's uh, you know, gone down in history as being. So that's what happened on this day in Tudor history. Anne Boleyn took to her chamber along with her ladies to prepare herself for the birth of what would be Queen Elizabeth I. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about uh, there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live, but rest assured I'm here on a daily basis for you with uh, lots of Tudor history uh, facts and events. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.